Hi, my name is Melanie Tolmich Signs. I'm an enrolled member of the Ho Chunk Nation of Wisconsin. I'm a visual artist and a teaching artist as well, and it's my pleasure today to provide you with an introduction to porcupine quill embroidery. The art form itself is truly an American art form and has been done for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of years here in North America because of the access to the North American porcupine. I want to show you some of my examples um, the pieces that I've made. And so I'm going to switch from my um, laptop camera to my document camera for you to see these objects while I talk about them. So these are several examples of pieces that I currently make. So some of my designs might be a little bit more contemporary than you've seen. Maybe not. Okay. The type of um, earring that I'm going to show you in terms of the example of what we're going to make together are right here. I've done these with embroidered kind of lilac or pink colored porcupine quills onto birch bark. And on here I'm utilizing a little bit darker purple. And these I've done on brain tan deer skin. I was taught by my uncle Mike Winishek, who's one of our former chiefs, bloodline chiefs of the Ho-Chunk Nation. He's the one who inspired me and um, I, he was my first porcupine quill mentor to show me. This particular piece is done with all different variations of natural and dyed porcupine. So I work with um, my own concoctions of vegetal dyes as well as um, contemporary or aniline dyes that you can buy in the store. So this one is all done on brain tanned um, deer skin. This is also a pouch that I've done. This center technique that you can see in the wing this design is called the Ahuchoga or Blue Wing design. I'm a descendant of Chief Blue Wing of the Ho-Chunk Nation. The inner part of the wing is quilled and I've utilized a process or a method called the zigzag technique. And so that's the technique that I'm going to show you guys today. So for our, our porcupine quill embroidered earring project, we'll need the following materials. Some sort of fiber for the hand sewing for the main part of the earring. Um, in my case, I'll show you examples using brain tan deer skin as well as birch bark. But you can also use, if you have really thin rawhide or parflesh, you could use that. Or even felt, if it's a high grade felt, nice and even thin, not too big or bulky. You need porcupine quills. I recommend size 10 beading needles and the long ones. Lot 0 or lot O Nemo thread. Beeswax size 11 glass beads, ear wires, I prefer the um, sterling silver, styrofoam cube, and what I mean by that is just a little block of styrofoam, something like this, okay, scissors, awl, pencil, ruler, and a small water container, okay, so once you have all those materials, then we can start talking about the methods that we're going to be using. So when you use porcupine quills, porcupine quills are made from the keratin that also makes up, as human beings, our toenails and fingernails. Um, the keratin comes out in the form of the quill for, with the porcupine, and the longer you um, soak them, the more pliable they become. So when they're dry, they're really stiff and hard. When they're soaked, they're very pliable. So that's how we're going to use them. We're all gonna, always going to keep them soaked in water. Um, I'm also going to recommend that when you use them, you're not going to use the biggest quills in whatever purchase you make to get your quills. You're going to have to find the quills that when you soak them are even. I recommend, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch wide. So when you flatten them, you know, they, they stay flat, but not too thick. We're going to do the zigzag method. And when you do the zigzag method, basically what you're doing is you're folding over and tacking down the quill. Okay, So I'm going to pretend that this piece of paper right here is a gigantic porcupine quill. And there are big quills like this, like in New Zealand and Australia. They're, the porcupines there have big quills. But let's say this is um, a porcupine quill. I've already cut off the tip here, which is the sharp part that barb that gets stuck in your hand if you're not careful. I've cut that off already and I've soaked it in water so it's real pliable. Okay. Using a needle and thread, a little tail here on one end and then on the long end, 
I'll put a knot. And just for safety's sake, I'll do a double knot. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to tack down the porcupine quill with our needle and thread, right? And when we start with the zigzag, we're going to be going from the underside of our material, whatever fiber you're using, bark or um, hide, to the front, okay? And so I can't see through it because I don't have x-ray vision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a guide hole in there first. Okay. And that way from the back, I can see where my needle needs to go. Working back to front. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm not going to take the dark end of the quill to start. I'm going to take the light end of the quill. Okay. And I'm going to take the end and just slightly overlap the band of quill work that I want to make. Okay, I'm filling this band. Just going to slightly overlap and I'm going to tack it down with my thread. And I banded it down, tacked it down. Okay, And then I'm going to take my quill and I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to do the same thing, coming through the back side, and then tack it down. And that will hold it into place. See? Okay. Now I need to do another tack here, because I'm going to take my quill and I'm going to fold it over. And that edge is going to lie on top of my first band that I did here. Okay, And when I do that, I'm going to share this same pierce, the same hole. When I was learning quill work and going into museum collections, it was looking, being able to look at the reverse side. And I'm going to tack it down here. Looking at the reverse side or the sewing patterns. Okay, that's what really helped to teach me how to do quill work. Okay, so I need to do another tack starting right here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the back again. I'm going to go through the same hole. Oops, let me show you. Same hole I did before. Holding it over. Tacking it down. Okay. Again, going through the same hole I did previously on the other side. And folding it over. Tacking it down. see it's coming together okay now you notice this part of the quill is not long enough to do another band over here okay so what I'm going to have to do is incorporate another quill so I have another one here by sliding it underneath the one I'm currently working on I can then <coughs> fold it over and disguise that little leftover. See it? Okay. I'm going to go to the back again, reuse that. So you can start seeing the, the sewing, the tacking design. That's how you know you're doing it right. All right, so let's get started on our earrings. So I myself, I make a lot of this t type of design in terms of the diamond design on um, these small type of earrings. So when I, I make a series, I typically make a pattern um, so I can make a whole bunch of them and they can all pretty much look the same. And so in this case, I made a pattern using just an old file folder. What I did was I cut out the shape that I wanted it. 
and then I did it kind of worked it out mathematically first by folding it and stuff uh, using paper and then once I created that design assembled the shapes that I wanted then I was able to just outline them using a, a nice heavy straight pin or if I needed to if the material was a little heavier I might use my my awl and that's my pointed tool like this it's called an awl and then I can take my design, again using my straight pin, putting my pattern over the fiber that I'm using, and I can just poke it and create that, transfer that design. And that's what I did here. Okay. What I'm going to do on the bottom one, just because that's the first one that we're going to embroider, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to draw it out just so you can see it. And that way, It'll make sense in terms of the progress that we're making. I'll just outline it. Ordinarily, I just do the pinpricks so it doesn't show when I quill on top of them. Okay? So that's the area that we're going to fill. And we're going to fill it just like we did here. This is a zigzag method. You can see where the quill is overlapping it. Zigzag. Okay, each one of these little boxes. Okay, and so to do that, we're going to pick one of our quills, and I'm going to ask you guys to cut the tips off, and that's what the um, styrofoam is for. I just put the tips into there, clip them off, just the ends, but that's the most dangerous part, and this is keeping them safe, and once it gets spilled, you can just throw it away. Okay, you also want them soaked in water, so make sure that they're nice and pliable. And then starting from the cuticle part where it was connected to the animal, we're going to just flatten them. I typically just flatten them between my thumb and my index finger. Okay, So I've got my flattened quill. I've got my birch bark or leather, whatever material you're using. Now I have my thread. And then at the end, I have a nice knot. All right. So I'm going to fill in this diamond starting at this lower right hand corner and my first time I go over with the quill is to the left then I'm going to go up again and then to the left. On this side I'm going to do my little guide hole like I did on the paper model. Okay, Flip it over so I can see where I need to stitch. And I'm going to do the first tacking of my quill. So I'm not going to use the brown end, the natural brown end. I'm going to use the other end. And it's going to overlap just slightly in that band area that I want to fill with porcupine quills. Okay, Using my needle, I'm going to tack over the top like that. Okay, So it's secured. Then I need to fold it over so it goes from there to there. Okay, I'm going to do an my little guide hole method again. Okay, so I can look from the back of my birch bark and see where I need to come through. Okay. I'm going to fold it over. Tack it down. Okay. And then just like we did on the paper model, I'm going to go to the back side and come out through that same hole that I did. Okay. So I'm going to fold it over, tack it down. like we did on that side, go through there. Fold it over. Okay. So I just have this little area. So I just have this little area to fill in. Just this little gap right here to fill in. Okay. So I'm going to take the quill, pull it up, and I'm going to allow the quill to go over the thread. Let me show you again. I'm going to push up the thread to fold it up. 
then I'm going to take the quilt and with the thread be line underneath it, I'm going to take my finger and fold that quilt over the thread so that edge aligns with the other tacks that I made with the zigzag. Okay, pull that up, tack it down. Okay, so I filled that little area that I wanted with quills. I'm going to recommend tying a knot, and the way that I do a real simple knot is I'll make a loop like this, and I'll run my thread through that loop. Bring that loop all the way to the fiber there. And then you've got that knot right on the surface. Okay. And then you can take your nice little scissors, trim that off, and you filled in that first little diamond. If you see parts that still want to stick out, you can always take your awl or your pin tool and just like push those little edges underneath. And then we just repeat it there and there. And when I finish with my thread, I typically just sew just a little end of it so it doesn't hang loose and get in the way. And you have the three diamonds. So the last part is actually taking the front part that you quilled and attaching it to a back part and doing it in a decorative manner, which will incorporate glass beads as like an edging stitch. Okay, So this will be the last part of our earring process. So we're going to add the glass beads. And when I do this, I, I make a little loop at the top to hold the ear wire. Okay. And the loop is about six beads. You can see six of these blue beads, iridescent blue beads. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first use my pin tool or my awl to mark where those two are going to go through the birch bark. So I'm going to put two holes, two little dots, not all the way through, but they're going to be right at the top. That's where my loop for my ear wire is going to be, and that's where I'm going to start. Okay, so I've got my needle and thread. Okay, so I'm just going to start at the hole that I did on the left. I'm going to do a guide hole just through the top surface, the quilled surface. Okay, and then going from back to front through that guide hole. And this will allow the knot to be disguised in between the two. So you can't see it anymore. Okay. All right. Six. Okay. Then I'm going to go through the 
top hole, oops, top hole, and my needle needs to go through both the top and the bottom piece of the birch bark. Okay, so I've gone through top and bottom. I'm going to pull and my loop is going to look like an, it's just guiding off that, off the surface of the quilled part. Okay, so what I need to do with my thumb is I'm going to push those beads up to the edge. Okay, so I've gone up through these last, these three beads the last three beads and then you can see there's three more beads remaining so I'm going to go through those three coming down okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce it one more time again pushing this up on the edge so you can see how it's coming together I'm going to take my thread and one more time I'm going to go through this hole, but creating holes that will go from front to back in both materials. Okay, turning reverse, repeating, going through those first three beads. Okay. I'm going to turn it over again so you can see the quill work again and then down through the last remaining three beads. Okay. And I'm going to move my thread to the back and then go from back to front and come up this right hole. Okay. All right. So we've got the little loop on that's going to hold the ear wires on there. Like this one that's the six okay and now we're going to go to the edging now in this case what's, what I'm going to do is instead of doing the two colored edging let's just make it simple let's just do a single colored edging and finish up this one okay so in order to create the edging what we're going to need to do our thread is coming toward us through the top the quill one okay we're going to take our needle and we're going to go through just the first bead, the one that's closest to the bark on the right hand side, just the one, okay? And pull your thread going up. And from now on with the edging, you're always going to just pick up two beads at a time, okay? So I'm going to pick up two beads like this, okay? And you want to be sure when you create this edging that the way you connect it or your stitches to the surface are evenly spaced okay so I went from front to back on both the top and the backing material in this case birch bark okay the edging needs to live on the edge so I'm gently going to push it up with my thumbnail okay and then I'm going to take my thread it's now coming out the back and I'm going to go up through the last bead that I added and when you get that up, kind of pull it, pull it away. And what it'll do is it'll help to configure that scallop. So the first bead and the third bead are horizontal along the edge. And that middle bead kind of pops up straight. Okay, let's show you again. Okay, picking up two beads. I want the space between each of these stitches to be even mine right here going through both materials push it up so it's on the edge and I'm gonna go back up through the last bead I added and then pull it see how it creates that scallop shape and so what you need to do to finish your earring is you need to continue the edging stitch all the way around. Right, as you can see, I've got just this little gap to fill with the edging. Okay, so I'm going to do one more pair of beads. And I'm going to make a hole right between these two, right about here. Going through both 
thicknesses, top and bottom of the birch bark. Pull that up, go through the last one. Okay. And then we just have to incorporate this edge into this first bead that we added here. So we need this one little bead. We're going to add that. That's going to go in right in there. So rather than two, we're just going to pick up one and go back through that first bead that we locked in there. Okay. So I added that one, and then I went down into that first bead. Okay. So it just locks in there. Then I'm going to go from front. To back and rather than making knots I like to just incorporate the thread into the pieces that I've already edged so I'm not just using up thread but I'm also reinforcing especially the part that connects to the ear wire reinforcing that I'm going to go from back to front, weaving back and forth, creating no big obnoxious knots that'll take away from the craftsmanship of the piece. Just gonna cut that off, and there you have it. One side of a porcupine quill embroidered birch bark and glass bead. Like I said, you can also do the same thing using deer skin. In this case, I even incorporated some little blingy beads on the edge. So I have really enjoyed um, visiting with you guys and showing you some of my artwork, and I hope you guys explore quill work and, and enjoy native art. Thank you. Pina Geeky. Bye.